Channel 13 has a long history of visiting the Olympic host cities before the games begin to gather human interest stories for you. I've been lucky to do it since the Olympics in Greece back in 2004. And every time we discovered the most amazing stories and our journey to Tokyo was no different. At night, Kyoto's Gion district might look quiet, even deserted. But veiled behind unmarked wooden doors are very expensive, often members only dinner experiences. Exclusive evenings hosted by what might be Japan's most famous yet mysterious figures, the geisha. If you're lucky, you'll catch just a glimpse. This is the extent of what most people see of a geisha. Their world off limits to foreigners and Japanese alike. Tokyo's geisha districts, while not as famous as those in Kyoto, are just as historic. Fukagawa is actually the oldest geisha district in all of Japan. It's here that we met a woman My name is Sayuki. willing to grant access to this secretive society. I became a geisha 12 years ago. This Australian's interest in doing a documentary about geishas led to her pursuing the profession as a career. It was a historic move. I was born in Australia, but brought up partly in Japan. And I am the first white woman to become a geisha in 400 years of geisha history. Sayuki is both geisha and geisha mom. So everything is learning by example from the geisha mother. Sayuki has three geishas living in her home including Tezusa. She is in her early 20s. She's a university graduate, which is quite common now in our district especially. Did you have family who were geishas? Or did you know anyone who was a geisha? No. She's known as a mako, an apprentice. I'm the first. <laughs> You're the first in your family to be a geisha. Yes. So they learn to wear kimono, they learn to comport themselves in a Japanese environment, how to sit and stand. And at the same time, they're learning lessons, uh, usually from the best masters. Geisha means artist, literally. And that's what it is, no more, no less. Geisha are artists. Geishas can take up to three hours to get ready. That includes putting on the iconic white makeup, a tradition that began hundreds of years ago. The old style tea houses were candle lit. So the girls with the whiter faces stood out from among the crowd. White and red, the very black hair is very stunning. It makes any Japanese look beautiful, I think. The kimono plus the ornaments add up. When the geisha are fully dressed up, they could be wearing $10,000 worth of work uniform. Once the geishas are ready, they catch a ride to the evening banquet, which take place at exclusive restaurants. At a geisha banquet, you see the beautiful geisha kimonos. They experience Japanese cuisine and sake and dance and music. It's like a totally intense Japanese cultural experience. There are challenges facing this profession. Once there were 80,000 geishas in Japan, now fewer than 2,000. Sayuki promotes the industry on her website. She offsets the cost of training, charging foreigners about $60 to watch the geishas take lessons or get ready for a banquet. And her geishas travel overseas. We want to do a geisha roadshow in America. <laughs> 
people look at me like or Tazuza. I do it all kind of celebrities. <laughs> Like you're a celebrity. Celebrity, yes. This is exactly what she wants to do. Being geisha is still like dream job. It's a world of great beauty and poetry. It would be a terrible pity for that to be lost. Get lost in the frenetic blur of Japan city life, and details are easy to miss. But slow down just a little bit, and you won't be able to stop seeing how cute this country is. There's a Japanese word for it. Kawaii. Kawaii. Means culture of cute cute things in stores, on the side of buildings, and in the streets. It is a thing. Cute is really highly regarded. Cute pets, cute fashion, cute art, all very kawaii. 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 But near the city of Hiroshima, <laughs> there's a man with a different idea. <laughs> of what's cute. His idea of cute? His pet is an eight-foot alligator. こんにちは。私は日本の村林の部民と言います。これは私のあの一番可愛いワニのカイマンです。he named it Cayman Coon, meaning young Cayman. 38 years later, these two have what might be Japan's most unlikely friendship. The gator lives inside, wanders in and out of the house. It's his home, you know. But like any other pet, the gator doesn't know he's a gator. Also enjoys a good outing. It's Totally out of the box, taking his uh, Cayman alligator for a walk. You come down here and there are people going, oh, it's Cayman Kun. <laughs> He's well known. <laughs> He's celebrated. Cayman Kun. Konnichiwa is especially popular at local schools. Kids love him. His adventure, you know, they're saying, oh, this is great. In fact, most of the children seem to have no fear. Got on a road, you know. What a fantastic thing. Muro Bayashi says the connection between his gator and people has been going on since it was a baby. But perhaps their most unusual connection comes at bedtime, because they share a bed. The gator does get his own pillow. He just treats him as one of the family. There, you know, you see, you see the way he talks to him, he speaks to him. Hi, Uncle. He's a real affection. In Japan, you'll see lots of things that are cute. Cuddly here is king. That's the, the real manifestation of cute, of kawaii. But at least for one man, kawaii comes with scales and really big teeth. I think it's sweet. Kawaii.
雲海が見れてしかもその雲海が晴れると朝日に輝く富士山それ以来写真を撮ることは私にとっては富士山を撮ることというふうになって今まで8年間こんにちは私は高志と言います。一年になりますが、富士山専門に撮っている写真家です。t a k a s h i has photographed Mount Fuji through every season and from every possible angle。家的に富士山の写真はおよそですけれども、年間2万枚ぐらいは撮っていると思います。His best picture landed on the cover of National Geographic Traveler。そこは富士山があって桜があって五重塔があってとても日本的な景色ですその美しい一番日本的な風景しかも富士山がある風景でナショナルジオグラフィックスに応募しましたそれが認められて表紙に採用していただいたのはものすごい幸せです Getting that perfect picture of Mount Fuji requires a steep climb, 398 steps in all. But today, Mount Fuji is obscured by the clouds. Still, Takashi and others continue to take pictures. 私は富士山の美しさを世界に知っていただきたいということで、世界での写真サイトに写真を公表してきました。There are other places in this area to see Japan's most famous mountain. Boat rides are popular. Or you can take a photo from the edge of a nearby lake. Most of us, though, will get a photo that looks something like this. But Takashi tries different styles. He comes back with stunning images. どこから見ても富士山が見えると。かなりの広さのところから富士山が見ることができます、えー、そういう美しい富士山、荒ぶる富士山に対して信仰の心がずっと古くからあったと思います There are so many places across Japan serving as stunning backdrops for photographers But for Takashi, there is only one place that brings him back time and time again Majestic Mount Fuji. Have you taken the perfect picture of Mount Fuji? To let that motta to get a masked at a more Sadani, so no motto can pick in a no to retire to Tsunen or Motemas. Visit Hiroshima, and you'll see the beauty and its scars. We're right on the edge of the river that flanks Peace Memorial Park. After the event on the 6th of August, the city decided they needed to establish something to memorialize. The tragedy that occurred on that day. At the same time every morning, the city marks the moment when the first atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. 8:15 detonated 600 meters above the above the city, and created the worst possible destruction that anyone could possibly imagine. For this woman, the memories are seared into her mind. Kiyomo Kono was 14. Over the years, she processed what happened by painting her memories. 
長野駅に降りた時にびっくりしました広島の街が消えとりました She led me through the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum つまずいたりするんですよこうしたら当たるでしょシューズがないんです私たちはね、ゾウリっていうのは入ってます Yasuka Kondo is another Hiroshima survivor. She was just four years old when the bomb exploded. A high school student painted her most vivid memory. Outside the museum, Are monuments. The ashes of 70,000 victims buried in this mound. There's a flame of peace and a peace bell. It's typical of a bell that's found in a Buddhist temple, which of course reaches into that notion of peace and brotherhood. And the atomic bomb dome still stands. 75 years after the bomb exploded, almost directly above it. Now many people come here to remember and pray for world peace. What does no more Hiroshima's mean? No more Hiroshima's, let's never have another nuclear attack on a city. But more so, I think it's, can we not find brotherhood? A city forever linked to the atomic bomb. With survivors who still tell their stories.